everybody. We're now going to start the webinar. So um, just a few housekeeping rules, first of all. Um, all attendees will be on mute and will remain so for the whole webinar. Uh, please can you use the question box to ask any questions related to the topic, and all questions will be answered after the demo. If we do run out of time or if the question does require a longer answer, then um, we will answer it offline directly. If you could please use the chat box for any questions related to the webinar, um, or if you can't hear anything or if the presenter's going too fast, for example. And please note that a link to view the webinar recording will be sent out after to all the dem uh, attendees. Okay, so to introduce the webinar series, the top five things, this is a small amount of key points to focus on. Now, this is the 10th in this series of monthly webinars at the moment. Um, you can sign up for one or, and we'll be sending out emails to register. Okay, so my name is Karen and I'll be facilitating the demo today. I'm an account manager here at T-Vision and my background is 17 years of software account management experience working for ERP companies. Martin from Continia will be doing the demo and he has worked for Continia for more than five years and is responsible for the solutions in the Netherlands, UK and Ireland. Martin does spend a lot of his time traveling to see customers, doing demos and visiting partners, and he flies to the UK about once every two weeks. So the agenda for today um, is to look at the five key points when considering document uh, management and expense solutions. So first of all, uh, this is all about reducing the amount of paperwork and being able to cut out the manual stages in the processes. With automating the processes, if there's tasks that can be automated, then this is going to streamline your processes, enabling a clearer and more auditable system. Then we're going to look at solutions on the go. So rather than gathering paper expenses and needing to get to the office in order to have them approved, would it not be better to do this remotely and be able to minimize paperwork and not having to duplicate data? With regards to simplifying approvals, do you currently have to wait for your approval uh, for your approver to be in the office um, or um, have the time to actually go into a complicated spreadsheet? By automating the approval process using email notifications and links directly to the digital version of the invoice and other documents, uh, and such as expense claims, um, they can be declined or approved and have information um, given over within minutes. And then we'll just go to the benefits of the document management expenses solution. So hopefully, from talking about the other four key points, you can visualize what these are. Um, but to summarize, they're a reduction in manual paper-based tasks, which will hopefully free up some time to concentrate on more value-added tasks. Also, you don't need a separate solution. Um, the Continua uh, solutions are actually within NAV when they're licensed. OK, so before I hand over to Martin, I'm going to do a quick poll to see how automated your document management and expenses solutions are. So I'm going to launch it now if you wouldn't mind putting in your answers and then I'll let you know the results afterwards. OK, just going to wait for a couple more people to put in their answer. OK, so I think that's for everybody. So um, the results are that for most people, some of the processes are automated, um, but spreadsheets are used for uh, um, some of the processes. And then the race are the saying that none are automated um, and they're either manual or they use spreadsheets. OK, so now I'm going to hand it over to Martin, who's going to give you a brief overview of Continia um, and show you the demo. Just a reminder, if you do have any questions, please use the question box and they'll be answered afterwards. So over to you, Martin. Oh, there you go. Thank you very much, Karen. Um, thank you for the introduction. Again, my name is Martin. I work for Continia and Continia is a Danish uh, ISV and we make add-ons for Dynamics NAV uh, and Business Central as well. We've been, been in the market for more than 25 years, and we focus on creating solutions only for Dynamics NAV. We do not do something with Sage or uh, SAP. We focus on NAV, and we're good at that. We have solutions for uh, OCR, so, um, scanning, registering, and archiving your invoices, for example. We have a solution for email output and for expenses and mileage claims. We have more than 7,000 customers worldwide using our solutions. And document capture is the number one add-on for Dynamics NAV, 
with more than two and a half thousand customers worldwide using this. Um, the last thing before I'm going to start a demo uh, for you as customers from T-Vision. T-Vision is one of our oldest partners in the UK uh, selling document capture, document output and expense management. Um, they're very experienced implementing this. So that's good news. You're not guinea pigs and um, but Karen can tell you more about this later. So now it's demo time. Um, these products uh, can do a lot of things and I do not have time to show it all. So I'll first start off with document capture. Um, Document Capture is our solution for scanning, registering, and archiving invoices. Today I'm going to show you how we process an invoice, how do we approve it, how do we post that and find it back. Um, we can do a lot more. We can do order matching, we can capture multiple lines of invoices, but because of time, uh, I cannot do this. Oh, sorry, cannot show you this. Then I will go over to expense management, our solution for um, submitting expenses and mileage claims straight into NAV from your mobile phone. I'll be showing you that, and I'll uh, close off this demo uh, with Document Output, our solution for sending out reports from NAV, like your invoices, remittance advices, statements, and other documents. So Document Capture, it will be fully integrated into your Dynamics NAV. It works on a very old version of NAV, 3.7, up to the latest version, uh, Business Central. Uh, all the functionality is the same in each uh, version of NAV. So if you use uh, maybe an older version of NAV, uh, this may not look familiar, but all these functionalities are in your system as well. So to start off, we can select a role center for the accounts payable team. And in the top three tiles, we can see document processing. And in document processing, you can see how many, in this case, invoices came in. The invoices can come in in three different ways. One, a local scanner next to your computer. You press the, put one invoice on it, you press the button, and it will be sent to NAV. Uh, it's not used a lot anymore in the UK, but it is still possible. The second method is the network scanner, the big scanner on the hallway. You put 100 invoices on it, you press the button, and it will be sent to NAV. The third uh, method is email, accounts payable, or invoices at your company name.co.uk. You ask your vendors to send the invoices to that email address, Document Capture monitors it and downloads them straight into NAV for you. If you go one row below this, we see Purchase Approval. And when, uh, with Document Capture, we can approve invoices, of course. And in this role center, a user can see how many documents he or she has to approve. And the same row goes for the bottom row. For credit memos, they can be approved as well. I'll get back to the approval process later on in this demo. I'll first start off by importing some documents. Before this demo, I've emailed some invoices to um, Document Capture, and they're ready now. That's the part that I'm not showing you today. <clears throat> I'm going to press the button Import Files. When I press the button Import Files, the OCR scanner will go over the PDF files, and that OCR scanner allows us to do something with the text that is on them. As you can see, it's very fast, and of course, we can also automate this process, so you do not have to press that button anymore, but for demo purposes, I will press a lot of things manually today. So as you can see from now on, we got the invoice on the right hand side. We got your to-do list up here. Uh, information will be later here and comments down below. So how does document capture work? We're going to create a template per vendor. And on the template, you're going to say, how does document capture need to process your invoice? Today, we'll start off with a simple cost invoice from Lewis Home Furniture. As you can see, I can zoom in and zoom out scroll through the page, and if it contains multiple pages, I can scroll through them as well, of course. We're going to tell the system, this cost invoice, I want the invoice number, uh, the dates, I want the posting description, all the amounts, it needs to be posted to a certain general ledger account, maybe I want to add some dimensions like cost center. I set this up once, next week when Lewis Home Furniture sends in an invoice again, it will be processed automatically. Of course, we can do a lot more than just simple cost invoices. We can also do matching against purchase orders. And the unique thing about document capture is that we can do this on a line level. So it can really check, did you receive 250 mountings for £12.50 and 50 pennies for 70 70 pounds? We can also capture multiple lines of an invoice and code this to maybe different general ledger accounts, um, um, add dimensions, you can fully code them to your liking and Document Capture will also be able to remember this for you. Again, I do not have time to show you everything, but uh, you can contact Karen or your uh, designated account manager at T-Vision for a personalized demo, and we can go through all these steps. 
Today, I'll start off with Lewis Home Furniture. Document Capture recognized uh, Lewis Home Furniture as a vendor when I pressed Import Files. Uh, it started scanning the document, it found a VAT number, and it found a match on the vendor card of Lewis Home Furniture. If there's no uh, VAT number, it will look for company name, address, postal code, company name, contact person, bank account number, whatever you prefer to find it. I'm going to press the button Recognize Fields now to start the process. I uh, just created the first template. We see a lot of things happening on the screen. On the right hand side, orange and blue bars appearing. In the middle, data, and down below, comments. So if we look here on the left hand side field, this is where the master template lies that you get with document capture. This master template contains the most common fields that can be found on an invoice, um, like invoice number, invoice date, order number, currency code, amounts. However, you as a customer can fully adjust this to your liking. You do not need T-Vision, Continia, or a developer to add any field that you like. Um, this is because we're fully integrated into your Dynamics NAV or Business Central. And um, uh, we have access to all your tables, so you can just say, I want information from this table, or maybe I want to write information into a certain table if you maybe have a bespoke field. Maybe a bit technical, but just nice for you to know that you can fully adjust this to your liking. If we look in the second column value, you can see that document capture tries to fill in as much as it can for you. However, the first time you need to check the KISS system because sometimes it makes a mistake the first time, and you need to correct that. If I select a value, you can see it gets highlighted on the right hand side of the screen. It will always jump uh, to uh, the page where it found it, whether it's on page number one, two, or three, it doesn't matter, and you see a big blue box. You can see an orange box and the blue box. The orange box is the header, that's the word that document capture is looking for, and the blue box is the value. Let's say the system did not find the invoice number for some reason, it will give you a message saying the invoice number is not correct. How would I teach the system? With my right hand mouse button, I'll drag a box around invoice number. With my left hand mouse button, I'll select the current value. And now the template is updated, it's saved, you do not have to press any additional buttons. Now the system knows how to find the invoice number for Lewis Home Furniture the next time. It found the invoice date, it found the due date, and it validates the due date with your payment terms. If they do not correspond, let's say you have 30 days of payment terms and the uh, vendor wants 14 days, it will give you a message saying, warning, the payment terms are not correct. However, it will always honor your payment terms because your NAV is leading. Of course, you can manually override this later. It found a contact person. Uh, we do not have an order number in this case. The currency code is left blank because it's a local currency within NAV. However, we can ha handle any currency that you have, of course. All the amounts are captured. Uh, document capture validates all the amounts the same way as NAV does. So it checks is this 20% of the amount excluding VAT? Are these two combined the same as amount including VAT? Is it a foreign vendor? It doesn't need VAT. All those rules are set up. Um, you can have multiple VAT amounts, freight costs, whatever you prefer, discounts, no problem at all. We can capture it for you. Because this is a cost invoice, the system asks for a general ledger account. That's also this red warning down here. No account has been configured. I can open your general ledger account list like you're used to. I can scroll through it or type in a number that I want to capture. In this case, 8330. And then the system will ask me, do you want to set this up? That's your default for this vendor. If I press yes, it will not ask about it again. If I press no, I will have to fill it in again the next time. For now, I'll press yes, and that red warning disappeared. For the posting description, I can type something in manually, capture uh, details from the template or from the PDF file, whatever you prefer uh, can be done. In this demo, I'll make it easier on myself. I'll say use inspection and reporting fee regarding Deerfield. The last field, invoice less credit memo, document capture uh, will be able to automatically recognize if this document is a PDF, uh, sorry, is a PDF file, uh, is a invoice or a credit memo. Double invoices will get blocked here. And now this template is done. I can do this in 30 seconds. After a couple of days of training from uh, T-Vision, you will also be able to do this. I'm going to press the button register now, and now we'll go into, for some of you, maybe a more familiar screen, the purchase invoices screen. 
We've modified it a bit so that you from now on can see the original PDF on the right hand side. You can of course drag and drop it. Um, you see it over here. All the details from the vendor are filled in. You can see the lines that it's created. In this case, only one, but it can be multiple, of course. We got a system here called uh, Attach Files. What we can do, we can attach any type of file to this invoice, and it will be saved to that invoice. And this can come in quite in handy during the approval process. Uh, for example, you can drag an email out of your Outlook into here, and that email will be saved, and everybody can see that. I'm going to send this one for approval now. The button sent for approval that I just pressed can be automated and the previous button register as well. But for demo purposes, I switched it off. You can always see where it goes and what the status is. In this case, it needs approval by Richard Lum. Before I show you the approval process, maybe a quick um, gimmick. If I press Lewis Home Furniture again, document capture remembers now all the adjustments that you made on this template. So now it's got the correct invoice number. It remembered 8330, it got the post description, so immediately your workload got a little bit less. Um, and you can, yeah, if you do that with every template within um, two or three weeks, everything um, with all your vendor setup will be okay. Let's say the vendor sends in a duplicate invoice, the system will automatically block it, saying the vendor uh, invoice already exists, and it even shows you where it exists in NAB. This is what I wanted to show you today about template making. We can also um, approve invoices, and we can do that either within NAV or within our approval portal. What is the difference between the two? Functionality-wise, they're both the same. Um, the only thing is um, with the web portal, you can open this on your mobile phone, on your iPad, uh, anywhere in the world, as long as you have an internet connection. And you can access the web portal with a cheaper variant of the Microsoft license. And uh, Karen can tell you more about this um, uh, after the demos. Your colleagues will get an email with a link. Um, if they press that link, either NAV approval will open or the web portal will open. In this demo, I will start up the web portal. We can approve while this starts up in various ways. We can set up approvers by vendor. We can uh, set up approvers based on dimensions. We can do it based on amount, for example, and you can uh, define a certain routing. Um, I'm opening the web portal right now. This is how the web portal looks like. Um, before I'm going to approve this invoice from Lewis Home Furniture, you can look up in the archive, what did I approve last week? If we look here on the top right, uh, you can set up an out of office. If somebody is sick or on holiday, it will be forwarded to somebody else. And of course, somebody in your uh, the accounts payable team and organization can put this on for your colleagues because they sometimes forget when they do this, when they go on holiday. This is how the approval looks like. On the right hand side of the screen, you get to see the original invoice, which you can scroll through and make it bigger, of course. You can add comments and also um, use the drag and drop functionality. I've added a comment now. We can see some details from the, from the invoice. The approvers, in this case, only Richard Lum. We can see the total amount. And here we can see the lines. What we've also included in document capture is um, yeah, smart permissions. So what we can do, we can determine per approver what they can and cannot change on lines. So you can say Richard Lump can make changes to the general ledger accounts, but if he opens, wants to make a change, he can only see the general ledger account in the 8000 series and he cannot see everything. Um, you can do this with item numbers, general ledger accounts, dimensions, project numbers, whatever you prefer, job numbers, so that they can only see maybe a certain range. You can also deny them the access to make changes. It's fully up to you and you can code this. <clears throat> On the top left, they can approve an invoice, they can reject an invoice, but then they have to fill in a comment why to reject it, or you can define reason codes for your colleagues to fill in. We can forward it in multiple ways. <clears throat> My apologies. We can select approve and forward forward without approval, and the last one, forward and return to me for approval if you want to ask some information. So you can say, um, 
did we order a new laptop? You can send that to the correct person. Did we order this? He or she can then say, yes, we ordered a new laptop for our new colleague. And then it comes back to you with that comment and you can approve it. We can also put an invoice on hold. If there's a query, then uh, you need to type in why you're putting it on hold. And um, the accounts payable team can see this. So if the vendor calls, they can immediately answer why it's been put on hold. I'm going to approve it now. Normally, it would have gone automatically to the next one, but I've only got one here now. If I go back to NAV, you can see that we've got one released invoice now. It gets a nice green color, and uh, now I can post this invoice. Uh, we can do the posting one by one in a batch or let a job queue run for you saying every day at five o'clock, everything with status release will be posted. After the posting process, document capture will stop and it will, um, that the process that you set up with T-Vision will continue. It'll probably go to the banking module and when the due date is there, the, the vendor probably gets paid. So this is in a nutshell, the process of document capture. Um, a recap, the invoices will come in either via the scanner or the email. Uh, they will get uh, downloaded straight into NAV. You will import them. At the moment you import them, the system will recognize if you, uh, for example, Lewis Home Furniture and puts a template on top of it. Uh, it checks all the fields that you've set up that it needs to fill in. If everything is okay, it can be sent to the approver automatically. He or she will get an email. Um, he or she, they will then approve it. It comes back to the accounts payable team. They can have a last look and then post it. How does the accounts payable team find their invoices back? They can do that in multiple ways. One is document search. Um, every invoice that is scanned with document capture is fully text searchable. So if you type in Deerfield, for example, it will find every invoice with the word Deerfield on it. And you can press the word uh, show PDF file and it will open your PDF file for you. You can look on every word that is on the invoice, not just uh, on the words in the orange and blue boxes. Every word is indexed for you. There are multiple ways, of course. Because we're fully integrated into NAV, we can uh, access it in a lot of points. So for example, if we go to a general ledger account and we go to the balance, we can see an invoice over here. I press the button navigate. And if I now press document capture file, it will also open the PDF file. You can press this button navigate in a lot of places in NAV. You can do that from your vendor card, from your posted documents, VAT entries, general ledger entries, and even more places. So you'll also be able to quickly find your document. This is uh, in a nutshell uh, what document capture does. It can do a lot more, but because time-wise, I will move on to the next solution. Um, I'm going to go to expense management now. Expense management is our solution for capturing expenses and mileage claims. Um, normally, we do not do PowerPoints in our demos, but uh, I've got one slide that I've got to show you before I start up the system. This will give you an overview. This is how it goes. So we got expense management, which will be fully integrated into your Dynamics NAV. Then we got the expense users on the left hand side that submit expenses and mileage claims. And they can either do that via an app on their mobile phone, which works on Android, Windows Phone, and iPhone. They can also submit expenses via an expense portal. Um, why do you want to use an expense portal? Uh, on a day to day basis, we see that a lot of people work behind their laptops. Maybe they book a flight or some train tickets. Then they can just take a snipping tool of the receipt and then add it via the expense portal, which sometimes is more convenient than the app. But on the road, you probably always use the app. These expenses and mileage claims get sent to Dynamics NAV. They then get approved uh, either within NAV itself or via the web approval portal that I just showed you with document capture as well. And the last thing that we can do, uh, if your company uses corporate credit cards, it doesn't matter which bank it is, we can upload the credit card transactions to NAV the system will then try to match these credit card transactions to the expenses that the users have sent in. Um, if the users have forgot to send in an expense uh, receipt or uh, the system cannot find it, it will notify the user on their mobile phone saying, please submit an expense. 
receipt as soon as possible. So it will save the accounts payable team some time um, chasing everybody. Let me show you how it works in real life. First of all, the, again, we can select a role center in NAV. In the top row, we got settlements. Settlements are like groups of expenses. You can create a settlement as a user. For example, um, I'm going to Denmark next week for, um, for our monthly sales meeting. Then I will say uh, create a settlement, a monthly sales meeting uh, November. I will add my airline ticket, my hotel ticket, um, some food that I had, and my taxi. When I fly back, I will close off this settlement and send it to my director for approval. And he can then see you spent 300 pounds during this trip, for example, and he can then approve it, yes or no. So this is really bundling expenses together. We can also send in individual expenses, of course, if you maybe got a, a parking ticket or something else, you can just individually send it. We can upload the credit card transactions over here. And we can do mileage claims, submit them at the bottom and the accounts payable team can um, yeah, access everything from here. It looks a bit like document capture. Later on in this demo, you will see a picture of the receipt here on the right hand side. You get to see your expenses over here and comments down below. And the accounts payable team has all the authority to make changes uh, if, if, some, if a user did something wrong. Let me now quickly start up my uh, expense app for you. I'm going here. I'm going to this one. Makes a connection. On the top left, you can submit a mileage claim. If I select that one, it will open a new field. There's a bit of a lag because of the, the cable. I'll type in a description saying uh, mobile demo, for example. Then I can say from address. The system will retrieve my location or I can look something up. And if I say then to address, tonight I'm going to our fair in, uh, in Antwerp. I will type in where I have to go. The Kinopolis in Antwerp. It's a, a very big cinema where, where the conference will be held. It will show me the distance down below. This is in kilometers because this is my standard setup um, here in the Netherlands. Of course, we can do miles as well. And if I select this button over here, the system will show me a picture of Google Maps that have been taken and show me the route that I should drive. I can also change this, of course, because there maybe was some traffic. It will show me a different route, how I can drive over Rotterdam, for example. I can adjust the number of miles that I've, I've done, but then the accounts payable team and the approver will get a notification of this. For the UK, we've set up that we can um, um, select multiple rates um, for users. So if you've got a personal car, then you get a lower mile, uh, then you get a higher mileage than when you have a company car, you'll get a lower mileage. We can set up that after 10,000 miles, the rate will drop a bit. All these functionalities for the UK market have been built in. I'll say I'll take this route. And if I look now on the top right of the screen, I can uh, delete the mileage claim, I can upload it, or I can add it to a settlement. Uh, the Denmark uh, trip that I'm doing next week, for example. I'm selecting the middle one now, and then the system uh, will prompt me with another message. You just want to send it. You maybe want to create a return trip as well, or maybe continue from Antwerp to another place. So it will save you some typing. I will just put it send for now, and the uh, mileage claim will get uploaded. We can also do. Um, um, uh, an expense claim, of course. Uh, I will open my camera on the top right. Then the system will open the camera. I can take a photo of the receipt. Hopefully you'll see it. There's a bit of a lag. I'll press OK. And the system will say use photo. I will say use photo. And the photo is added. Then I can type in a description saying uh, fuel for a temporary car. Then I can select an expense type. So 
So we will set up expense types with you and uh, your colleagues, like I'm doing right now, can select one. And behind the expense types, we will quote the general ledger accounts, the VAT amounts, um, everything that we can claim back. That's something that we as accounts payable will do. I will say transport right now. I'll type in the amount. It was uh, 45.20. And I can add in a department saying it was for sales. And we can add any dimension that you have in NAV. And then in the top, again, you can delete it, upload it, add it to a settlement. You can also allocate it, or we actually call it split it actually. For example, if you're staying in a hotel, you maybe have 80 pounds worth for a hotel night and 20 pounds worth of food, then you can capture the one receipt and then allocate 80 pounds to uh, expense type hotel and 20 times to expense type food, for example. You can also press the paper clip, see what photo you took. You can also add multiple photos, that's up to you. I will upload this one right now and it will be gone. Your mobile phone does not need to have to be online or connected uh, to the internet to submit expenses. You can make photos and fill in all the details. Uh, they will go into your open documents. And as soon as you have an internet connection, they will be sent out to NAV, which you can see over here. And you can see what you've been sending out. You can see your open settlements over here. You can see what's been approved. If something will be rejected, it will come back to you here in the app with a comment why it got rejected. You can maybe adjust it, or if you really cannot claim that expense, it will show that as well. So this is how we submit expenses from the app. I will quickly shut this one off again. I will go back to my demo environment. As you can see, nothing is here right now, but if I press the button synchronize, which we can automate, all the expenses gets picked up from the app and will be sent into NAV. You get to see the picture on the right hand side from now on. You can see what's been filled in. The expenses made by Bart Duncan. On this date, he selected the expense type transport. It was fuel for a temporary car. We've set up that it is pending approval immediately. Of course, you can also switch this off so that the finance team has to look at it first and maybe then send it for approval. It will see the amounts. If there's a foreign uh, currency involved, then it will be shown here, maybe euros, and then you'll see the local currency in NAV. Colleagues can select if they bought something with their own money or if they bought something with a company credit card. You can see all the dimensions over here and we can add more. Say, for example, we can also add the job number, the job task number, or anything that you like. And the same goes for a mileage claim. Which one is over here? Now it's been a bit better, better on a bigger screen. You can see the route that, it, that you need to take. The approval process can be done within NAV again uh, or via the uh, web portal that I just showed you with document capture. Maybe I'll show you the one in NAV now. Um, if you go to approval entries, you get to see the picture on the right hand side and all the details over here. On the top left again, approve it, reject it forward it in multiple ways or put it on hold and you can add comments. If you approve something, it is done. And then it will be here and ready to post again with the same color, green color with the status released. And then you can post it. And then the user will eventually get paid. If they bought something with a company credit card, they will not get paid of course. And the same goes for a mileage claim. You can look up the expenses in our posted expenses via the vendor, uh, via the general ledger account. Again, you get to see the picture on the right hand side. You can see what's been done with it, the dimensions that have been used. Uh, everything is done. There's a very brief overview of expense management. Uh, again, if you want a personalized demo, please let Karen or your other account manager know at T-Vision. To round up this demo, I want to uh, show you the last product, document output. Document Output is our solution for sending out reports from NAV. And with re reports, I mean like invoices, reminders, statements, uh, remittance advices, um, or any report that you can think of, purchase orders, for example, sales orders. And we can do that in an automated way. In this demo, I'll start off by showing you uh, how we send everything out. And then I will go to the back, how do we set everything up and show you how easy it is. 
So for example, we got 30 posted invoices here, but they're unhandled, they've not been sent out. I can open this list, and then I see all the invoices over here. I can do a couple of things. One, I can say email uh, opens in Outlook. If I do this, the automated message will be generated, but then I can still adjust something before it's been sent out. The first time I do this, it takes a bit longer, but the next one should be quick. While this is loading, if we look at the second button, send all to the queue, um, we can say we want every uh, sales invoice be sent to the queue automatically. And then on Friday afternoon, all the invoices will be sent out at five o'clock. This button uh, is still here, but we can also automate this so you do not have to press this button every day and then on Friday, everything will be sent out. We can also press the button print email all, which is the last one. If I press this one, uh, it will not pop up like it's doing now. It will send everything out via the SMTP uh, to your customers. Here you can see the automated email that's been generated with a text that you've set up, and I will show you this later. Your invoice is attached. Over here, and you can see the subject and where it's been sent to, and it will be sent out. If I press the button print email, as you can see, uh, very fast the system will send out this whole list to your customers. <coughs> you can set up per customer and per report if they either want it via the email, like we're doing now, if they want it to be printed out so you can send it via the Royal Mail to them, or both. That's up to you. And again, you can do this per report. So you can send out the invoices via email, but the, uh, I don't know, the remittance advices via the, via the Royal Mail, but that's up to you. Everything gets logged on your customers, for example, or on your vendors. If I open the vendor spot, my is furnishing at this case, you'll get a new fact box over here called document output. First of all, we got email recipients. With an email recipient, you can say, I want, um, um, purchase orders for this customer to be sent to um, this email address. And then I want the sales invoices to be sent to Karen from T-Vision. I know this doesn't make sense, but you get the point. You can add multiple uh, emails per document type and then um, that will be sent out to different people within the organization. Everything will get logged. We can uh, set up the SMTP server. Um, we can say email, email and print, print it, or maybe just skip this customer if you want to. We can set up automatic or um, uh, statements so that it will be sent out every month when there's something overdue maybe. You can see how many templates are set up for this customer and you can also manually send statements to your customers. If I now go to the back of document output, we got some templates over here. These uh, 30 standard templates, you get that with uh, document outputs, containing reminders, sales orders, uh, invoices, um, quotes. Um, we also have remittance advices for the, for the UK market, but this is not included in my demo package. Um, and you can add any report that you like. Let's say you want to make some adjustments to the sales invoice. This is a bit less flashy than our uh, than the other previous products. Here you can fill in which report the system needs to take. Uh, so you can also do your bespoke report that you've created with T-Vision. You can add fixed CCs or BCC recipients. You can select from what email address, um, in this case, the sales invoices will be sent out. Sales invoice will be sent out from um, finance at your company name that code at UK and purchase orders will be sent out from the purchasing team uh, at your company name that code at UK. Um, you can even upload certificates from PDF files. You can say where it needs to be saved. But the more important stuff here at the bottom, how do you edit an email template? So you go here, you say press edit email template for sales invoices. <coughs> then a new field will open. It is a template, do not send. You get a lot of codes over here, and down, down below there, there's text. So here you can see dear percentage two, which is a code that we use. If he selects percentage two, it will pick up the cell to contact name from NAV. 
please find your invoice. Um, let's make a small adjustment with number uh, one attached to this email. It is always a pleasure to do business with you. Maybe I want to add a holiday greeting. Um, we wish you a Merry Christmas. A bit early, but as you can see, you can make, can make quick adjustments. You can create your, uh, how do you call it, your email signature over here with codes from NAV, or you can just copy and paste it from your uh, Outlook. I can make some changes here as well. Invoice from Vision. If I press save now, the template will be as updated and I do not have to do anything again. We can do a lot more. We can also maybe add an extra file over here, maybe your terms and conditions. If I uh, go to this one, I want to add your terms and conditions, the sales and delivery terms. I can just drag and drop them here. And from now on for my sales invoices, this will get uh, sent with it as well. I'll save them, and you can see the email template is saved. We can also have the button here called Merge PDF File. Instead of just dragging and dropping the sales terms to the email that I just did, you can also select that sales <coughs> terms in the Merge PDF part, and then the system, when it um, creates the invoice, it will put the invoice on page number one, and on page number two, you get your delivery terms. So everything is nicely bundled together. We can also use a background PDF file, maybe with your letterhead. We can select language codes, so it will look at the language on the customer card. If it's a Dutch customer, there will be a Dutch email sent out. If there's an English customer, an English uh, invoice will be sent out. All the setting up should be quite fast. And if I'll now go back <coughs> to my unhandled sales invoices, I've been sending some out, but if I press show me the ones that have already been sent out, and I now press email open in Outlook, the system will first show me um, the invoice. It shows me the delivery terms. I've added a small text with number this. We wish you a Merry Christmas, and then I can send it out. So making adjustments to a template is really easy. You can do this with the holiday greetings. You can add that. You can add marketing material in your emails. Uh, very uh, fast and easy. Um, that document output is our smallest product. Um, it's been used quite a lot in the UK, actually. Um, and uh, yeah, the, the good thing of this product is it is uh, very easy to configure. Uh, the biggest part is ever actually typing in the emails uh, on the customer and vendor cards, uh, but setting up the templates is really easy. Hopefully I'm on time, or maybe I've uh, overdone it a little bit. I'm sorry about that. Um, I'm going to look if there are some questions, and uh, if let me see if there are any. Um, okay, so I've got one that's I, come in here at the moment. Um, says, is it possible to apply expenses policy limits against expense claims? Yes. So um, as of the release that's coming out in January, we're putting in limits of what people can do. So then you can say there can only be I don't know an expense claim uh, of 100 pounds in a restaurant. So yes, that will be there. Okay, and another one here is, um, are the solutions also available for Business Central? Yes, so all our solutions are ready for Business Central on-premise uh, as of now. You can download it now and install it. For the cloud versions, that they will be ready in Q1 of 2019. Okay, brilliant. Well, thanks very much. Um, one more is just coming. Can unauthorized and unposted expenses and invoice be reported on? Um, so if there's an invoice of an uh, expense or an invoice that's not been approved, can that be posted? Was, is that the question? Can, can it be reported on? So can you create a report to ah, show that? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So maybe I can do this one. Um, we got a report here, for example, in expense management. It is a bit short now because I've done one, but the answer is yes. It will show you, uh, it will send it to the users and you can see it um, um, if, an info, if an expense is posted, yes or no, uh, what you are owed. You can see it over here. So you can see these ones are posted. And then if there were unposted ones, they will be down here as well. So the answer is yes, you can do that. 
Okay, thanks. We've had a couple more, but we probably don't have the time. So any other questions we'll answer separately. We'll, we'll drop you an email about it. Okay, that's yeah. great. So Martin, if you could go on to that next slide, brilliant. Okay, so we'd like to leave you with the five key takeaways about the continuous solutions, which we hope will help you decide if you're going to consider them for now or at some point in the future. So first of all, have a think about how manual your processes are. How long does it take you to manually input the data from NAV or gather your expenses together and submit them for approval? Or how long does it take to send out invoices or remittance advices or any other documents? Then think about how many documents or expenses you're currently processing. So how many invoices do you process a week or month? How many are sent out um, or received by paper or emails? Or how many um, are you actually sending out yourselves as well? And then have a think about how complicated your processes are. So do you have different levels of approval? Do you have to input data in more than one place? Or do you have to wait for somebody to be in the office in order to do the approvals? Then think about what time savings or efficiencies you could make. So perhaps consider uh, the time it takes to correct human errors or getting payments done on time, less paperwork, more GDPR compliant, less time finding documents for auditors. So all this equates to giving you more time to do more of the value added and analysis tasks. And finally, if you want to know more information or you'd like to see the solutions in more detail, then as Martin has suggested, um, please drop me a line and we can book in a demo for you. OK, so go on to the final one. Um, so I hope you found this interest, uh, webinar interesting and informative. So this is the 10th in the series of the webinars. Now, due to the Christmas period, our next one's going to be in February. But a list of all the upcoming ones will be on our website and you'll be able to register for them then. OK, so finally, uh, thanks once again for attending. When I close this session, a survey will appear and it'd be great if you could respond with some feedback. If you do have any further questions, feel free to drop me an email. So thank you very much, everybody.